and welcome to Kids Corner. It's Shirley and Sir Winston again, and we're all dressed up because we're going to tell a story about kings and queens. And it's a story about courage. It's the story of Esther saving the Jewish people. And it's a story that the Jewish people tell at their festival of Purim. Now, it's a story where you might like to participate because at this festival, when Jewish people hear the name, for, and this is our character Esther and Mordecai, they cheer because they're the heroes. Think you could do that? Yay! And then when they hear the name of this guy, Haman, who's not the hero, he's the villain, they hiss and boo and stomp their feet. Boo! Okay? Okay, so I'm getting ready to read you the story. And the story happened a long time ago. A long time ago, when Xerxes was king of the Persian Empire and the beautiful Vishti was his queen, King Xerxes threw a great party for all his noble and military leaders. That party lasted for nearly six months. And to finish it up, he gave a seven-day banquet in his palace for all the men who were in the citadel of his capital city. At the same time, his queen Vashti gave a banquet for all the women. Now Vashti was a very beautiful woman. The king was proud of her beauty. But by the end of seven days of banqueting, when he had too much to drink, the king did something stupid. He asked Vashti to come and display her beauty by wearing only her royal crown. Queen Vashti quite rightly refused, and the king got very angry and asked his advisors what he should do because the queen didn't obey his command. The advisors said the king should make a law that Vashti should not come into his presence again and her role as queen should be given to someone else. And the king did exactly that. When his anger cooled, he realized he didn't have a queen. His advisors suggested he should have a beauty pageant for all the beautiful girls throughout his lands, and whoever pleased him could be his queen. He thought this was a great idea and sent out messages to gather all the beautiful girls in his land under the care of Haggai in the women's part of the palace. At this time, in the same city, there lived a man called Mordecai, a Jewish man whose ancestors had been carried into exile in Babylon. He had brought up his cousin after her parents died, and her name was Esther. Esther was a lovely girl, and she was taken to the king's palace for this beauty pageant. She was there a long time, as each girl was to have 12 months of beauty treatments before she was taken to meet the king. But each day while Esther was there, Mordecai walked near where she was to find out what was happening. Mordecai had told her not to tell anyone that she was Jewish or about her family background. When Esther's turn came to go to the king, he was more pleased with her than any of the other girls, and he had made her his queen. He had a great banquet, and he had given everybody a holiday. A while after Esther had become queen, Mordecai was sitting by the king's gate, and he heard two people plan to kill the king. He told Esther, and Esther told the king about the plot, 
giving Mordecai the credit. Sometime after these events, the king gave Haman the greatest job in all the land, and everyone was to kneel down before Haman and pay honor to him, but Mordecai would not. Day after day, Mordecai refused to bow down, and day after day, the king's officials spoke to him about it. He told them that he would not bow down because he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai would not kneel down, he became very angry. And his officials told him that the reason was because Mordecai was a Jew. So Haman decided that not only would he kill Mordecai, he would see that all the Jews were killed. Haman went and he told the king, there was a people scattered throughout his kingdom whose customs were very different and who did not obey the king's laws. And really, it was best to get rid of those people. The king told Haman to do what he wanted in the king's name. And he gave him his signet ring so that he could put his stamp on the law. So Haman sent out a law that on a certain day, all the Jews would be killed and their property taken. When Mordecai learned what happened, he put on his sackcloth and ashes. Those are signs of being in mourning, of being very sad. And he went out into the city, wailing. Wailing. Esther's servant saw him there and told her. So she had one of her servants to find out what was happening. And Mordecai told him and gave him a copy of the law and had him to go to Esther and ask Esther to go to the king and beg for mercy for her people. Esther sent back a message. I cannot go. For the law of the land is, if anyone approaches the king in his inner court without being asked there, they are to be put to death, unless the king extends his golden scepter to them. Mordecai sent back a message. Do you think that because you are in the king's house, you alone will survive? You need to think that maybe you became a queen for a time like this. Esther sent back a reply. Ask all the Jews in the capital to fast for me, and I and my maids will fast. And when the three days are up, I will go before the king. And if I perish, I perish. After three days, Esther put on her royal robes, and stood in the entrance to the royal court. When the king saw her, he was pleased, and he held out his scepter to her. He said, What do you want, Esther? Even if it is half the kingdom, I will give it to you. Esther said, If it pleases you, can you and Haman come to a feast I've prepared today? The king sent for Haman, And they went at once. After they were eating a while, the king asked, What would she like, even if it was half his kingdom? So she replied, If he and Haman would come to a feast the next day, she would answer his questions. Now Haman was very happy, except when he saw Mordecai at the king's gate, because Mordecai would not bow down before him. But he went home, and he boasted to his friends and his family he was the only other person beside the king that Esther had invited to the feast. Now that night, when the king could not sleep, he ordered that the records of his reign be brought to him and that his servant would read From them. And the servant read the story of how Mordecai had uncovered the plot against the king. And the king asked what had been done to reward Mordecai, 
And the servant said, Nothing. So the next morning, when the king saw Haman, the king asked Haman, What should he do for the person that he wanted to honor? And Haman thought the king must have been talking about him. So Haman said, Well, what you should do is put one of your royal robes around his shoulders and have him go on your royal horse and have one of your princes lead the man on this horse throughout the city saying, This is done for the man that the king delights to honor. And the king said, Great idea! Get the rope and the horse and do just as you suggest for Mordecai the Jew. And Haman was not happy, but he had to do what the king said. Later that day, the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. Once again, the king asked, What is your request? It will be given to you even if it's as much as half the kingdom. Queen Esther says, If it pleases you, spare me and my people, for we are going to be killed. King Xerxes was quite upset, and he said, Who ever would do such a vile thing? And Esther said, Haman. The king got very angry. He ordered Haman to be killed. He gave Esther Haman's property. And he gave Mordecai the signet ring that he had given to Haman. Esther begged the king to put an end to the evil plan. But the king said, I cannot do a law that has been sent out, but that Mordecai could do what he thought was best. So Mordecai had a decree written up with the king's seal on it that the Jews had the right to defend themselves from their enemies. And that law was sent throughout the land and there was much celebration among the Jews. Esther and Mordecai had saved their people and every year the Jews celebrate this at their festival of Purim. So Esther had shown much courage to go before the king and do what she did. She used what she had to take a brave stand. Wasn't that a a really great story? So now let us end by having a prayer together. Dear God, You could repeat after me. Thank you. Thank you. For the example of Esther. For the example of Esther. Help us. Help us. To be brave. To be brave. Like her. Like her. Thank you. Thank you. For the people. For the people. Taking care of us. Taking care of us. And others. And others. Thank you. Thank you. For loving us. For loving us. Amen. Amen. And we'll see you next time at Kids Corner.